As most of you will probably know by now, last week there was a private event being held for Tory donors, cabinet ministers and MPs. And Greenpeace decided that that was the perfect time to hold a rather disruptive protest. And during the protest, this happened with Mark Fields MP. Yes, Mark Field had the audacity to use force to remove someone who was not invited to a private event. Now, could Mark Fields have used less aggressive force to remove the woman? Probably. Could he have waited and called security before that woman did whatever she was going to do, which none of us know? For me too, there is now just a scintilla of uncertainty. Shame! Probably not while they have their hands full of that chaos. Now, am I saying that the woman probably had acid in her bag and was planning to harm someone? No, I am completely on the side that she was there to be completely peaceful. Though I'm not saying I don't sympathise with the fact that we don't know what she did. It's all a post hoc argument. It's after the fact. However, you'd be hard pushed to convince me that this was illegal use of force. From the subreddit Police UK, there is someone with the tag the Human Blackstones who is verified, and the Blackstones are a police resource who help with people passing legal examinations to be part of the police. And this is their summary of the legal use of force by Mark Fields. I don't particularly like Philip Hammond and I sympathise heavily with Greenpeace, but this use of force is, was plainly lawful. The woman was a trespasser and she knew she was a trespasser. Telling the activists to leave didn't work and common law says that peaceful trespassers can be ejected by reasonable force after the, they have been asked once to leave. We went into the event announcing who we were very clearly. We were there to make a very important point that we are climate emergency. This provides absolutely no protection in law. I'm honestly surprised she even raised it as a defence. Greenpeace don't have any power or right of entry, so they're still trespassers and the rules on ejecting trespassers still apply. I don't believe that he thought she might be armed. That sounds like an after-the-fact confabulation to me. However, notwithstanding the fact that he knew she was unarmed, it's difficult to argue that the force used was unreasonable. If it has caused no injuries beyond maybe some rending, which realistically, that's all it would have done. So there you go. Someone who is literally verified to be part of a legal police exam is explaining exactly how this is lawful. So I think it's fair to say that this is lawful. And yet, regardless of this, Mark Field suspended as minister after grabbing climate protester by the neck. Police investigation reports of assault as video shows Field forcefully removing woman. Mark Field has been suspended as a foreign office minister after a video showed him pushing a female Greenpeace activist against a pillar and grabbing her neck while she protested at the Chancellor's Mountain House speech. Police are investigating third party reports of assault made against Field who has since apologised to the protester. The MP for the cities of London and Westminster said he had felt threatened when the protester walked past him and was worried she might have been armed. I can imagine in a time when all that chaos is going on, that would be a reasonable thing to think. We have all thought stupid things when under pressure. Downing Street said Theresa May had viewed the footage of the incident on Thursday night and decided to suspend him. Yes, another useful thing that Theresa May has done. The activist Janet Barker said on Friday that she was incredulous at his reaction and welcomed the suspension but would not press criminal charges. I think it is something best dealt with in the court of opinion, she said. Barker said Field had pushed her so hard that as they reached the door that she had almost fallen. She said he should take anger management classes. I want him to think about what he did and why he did it and address his behaviour. 
well, from the court of public opinion and someone who helped with resources to help for legal exams for the police, it sounds like it was perfectly reasonable, I'm afraid. This is no different to me saying that I think that all climate cultists should be sectioned, but I think that I have more reason to say that than they have to say this. Most of the rest of this article is just different spokespeople saying pretty much the same thing. He's been suspended, we're looking into security, this was a failing of many people, blah 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 blah. But the main one I want to look at is Field Statement himself. In a statement released in the early hours of Friday before his suspension, Field said he had reacted instinctively. He said he grasped the intruder firmly in order to remove her from the room as swiftly as possible. I deeply regret this episode and unreservedly apologise to the lady concerned for grabbing her, but in the current climate I feel I needed to act decisively to close down the threat to the safety of those present. Field said he had referred himself to the cabinet office to examine if there had been a breach of the ministerial code and that he would cooperate fully with his investigation. So as far as I'm concerned, Field is still in the right. He was fine to remove the woman. He may have done it a bit too aggressively, and as he said, that was probably due to him acting instinctively, and I can understand, with all the milkshaking going on, and how some people seem to think that's not enough, I can see why he would think that, and why he would act the way he did. He's not making any excuses for himself, he is fully saying, in full, in this statement, that he regrets it, wish he wasn't as aggressive as he was, but felt like he had to at the time. We all do things we regret. Should he be punished in some way? Honestly, I'm on the side of probably not. He shouldn't be suspended. He should keep his post. And after the investigation is fully complete and he has found that he hasn't broken any sort of rule or any sort of law, things should go back to the way they were. But now I want to talk about the actual climate activist who decided to speak out to the BBC about the entire incident. We just walked in in a very dignified way. Just a scintilla of uncertainty. Shame! So sorry, I think I just mixed up footage there. No reason I would have done that at all. Uh, sorry, carry on. Um, we, there was quite a few of us um, and we just we walked in there, we were polite with people and we just said we're here to deliver a message. <laughs> Polite and dignified. Truly a protester of our time. Uh, and I, I think the fact that there was quite a few of us, um, we were able to, to do that and to, to get in. How can you say with a straight face that you walked in in a dignified and polite manner, while at the same time saying that you only got in because you had the vast amount of numbers that you had, i.e. intimidation through numbers? It's very newspeak. And were you challenged? Um, we were, yes. Um, there was some security there and they did say, um, I'm sorry, you can't enter. Um, at which point we, were, we said we've got an important message to, to issue um, and we were polite with what we were saying. We did manage to get through. Well, you can't have been that polite. They, do, they weren't letting you in and you say you managed to get through, not they let us through. So you can't have been that polite. I, I mean, the only thing that's really annoying her is the fact that she is just barefaced lying to me. I, that is the thing I hate about this. A, a number of us didn't manage to get in, inside. And um, why do you think that some people did and some people didn't manage to get in? Um, I, I think maybe they were a little bit disarmed and they didn't quite know what was happening. Uh, so uh, the, by the time they realised what was happening, they did manage to close the doors and there was, there was no... No one else was able to enter the building. So you forced your way in. That, that's what you're saying. So if you force your way in before they had time to react and stop you getting in, do you not think it's fair game that you were forced out? I mean, come on. So there was about 30, 40 of you who got in? Yeah. And um, you weren't wearing badges or anything like that that would sort of signify that you were supposed to be there? No, we didn't. We were wearing climate emergency because that's what we were there for. And you weren't asked for any ID or anything like that? No, we weren't. They, she just told you that they forced their way in. Why are you asking if they had any badges or ID if they were trying to get in? Who is this woman asking her the questions? Does she think? 
And speaking of this climate protest, it, it turns out that the Greenpeace activist who was grabbed by Foreign Office Minister Mark Field took part in an oil rig protest days earlier. The Greenpeace activist who was grabbed by Foreign Office Minister Mark Field was part of an oil rig protest in Scotland. Only days earlier it has been revealed. It has been revealed that Ms Barker was part of the protest in the Cromley Firth where Greenpeace activists tried to stop a rig departing to drill for oil. The campaigners boarded the Transocean rig in the Crom... In the Cromarty Firth on June 9, which had been bound for the Vorlich oil field 150 miles east of Aberdeen. BP, which contracted the rig, has described the actions of the climate change campaigners as reckless. However, Greenpeace said that the protest showed what people could achieve and called on the oil giant to end drilling for new wells. 14 people were arrested, and the Greenpeace ship Arctic Sunrise then shadowed the rig into the North Sea. Intimidatory, reckless and raiding tactics. This is what climate activists do. And they are going to keep doing this because they believe they have the virtue of a planetary scale. And that makes people insane. In fact, I have the Extinction Rebellion This Is Not A Drill handbook. And inside there are some interesting passages. I understand Extinction Rebellion and Greenpeace are two separate organisations, but they go by the same principles. And you can tell that by the way that they have similar tactics. And this part in the Act Now section is called Courting Arrest by Jay Griffiths. Why do you want to be arrested? asked one of the police officers at Oxford Circus. This question is at the heart of Extinction Rebellion. I have never in my life been arrested for all the usual reasons. A desire to be a law-abiding, concern about acquiring the criminal record, nervousness about a fine or imprisonment, fear of being isolated in a locked cell. For Extinction Rebellion, I wanted to be able to take non-violent, direct action without any of those fears. When you seek arrest, calmly and willingly, the idea of it is no longer a deterrent. The sting is gone. So is the fear, because the way to stop being scared of something is to actively attempt it. One of the most powerful ways to bring about change is when people are willing to be imprisoned for non-violent civil disobedience. In the tradition of the suffragettes, my grandmother wonderfully was a Pankhurst, though she never said if she was related to the Pankhursts and the civil rights movement. Courting arrest means moving from bystander to upstander, standing up for something infinitely bigger and more important than yourself. This is the self-sacrificial idea of arrest at the core of Extinction Rebellion strategy, and it gives you strength from within. Ancient values are overtly resurrected in this Easter rebellion in London. The values of chivalry and honour, faith in life and being in service to Our Lady, Notre Dame, Mother Earth and the mother on whom everything else depends. Everything, as both Notre Dames were burning. So these people are actively looking out to waste police time and resources because they believe that what they are doing is saving the planet. And of course they do this by protesting public transport, having radical ideas that have already been tried before, such as 100% renewables, just so you know Germany tried it and now they are pumping more coal emissions into the atmosphere than ever because they simply weren't getting enough power. But I think you understand the idea. They are actively trying to get these type of reactions and Mark Fields was an absolute goldmine for them because now they have a victim narrative. The thing is, when I realise that they are trying to find a victim narrative and when they are trying to waste police time and resources, I have absolutely no sympathy for them and neither should you. They are actively trying to create their own narrative that they do not deserve. If you want to save the planet, do it yourself by buying an electric car, recycling all your rubbish and doing your best to try and reduce your pollution and emission footprint. In doing so, that will naturally have an invisible hand affecting the market towards these climate protesters' ends. But the more they just try and make themselves a victim narrative, the more people are going to resent them and want to do the opposite of what they want to do. But that's everything I had for now. Just so you know, I am planning to do a small review on the This Is Not A Drill Extinction Rebellion handbook, but it probably won't be done for a while. But in the meantime, thank you very much for listening. And as usual, see you next time.